Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 85 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is Roasted Tomato Pinchos with Onion Confit, Apples, Plums, Bacon, and Roasted Garlic. This little flavor explosion makes a great past appetizer or small plate. I call it a pinchos, which in Spain is a bite smaller than tapas. Here you will learn to roast garlic and to melt onions, which means to cook onions long and slow on low heat with a little fat such as oil or butter. The onions will become very soft and translucent, almost as if they melted. Melting the onions will yield a confit, which means to cook slowly in fat. The fat can be animal fat, such as duck fat or butter, or vegetable fat, fat such as olive oil. Confit ingredients are lusciously rich. The key to confit is patience. Keep the heat low and let the onions cook for as long as they need. This dish is not hard to make, but it has several components and steps, so I rate it as challenging. Techniques today are slicing and chopping, peeling, coring, seeding, and dicing, seasoning, prepping vegetables, roasting garlic, sweating, melting onions, and making an onion confit, sauteing and roasting, and garnishing. So let's start cooking. All right, let's talk about the ingredients that we'll need for lesson 85. We're gonna need about uh, six cloves of garlic, you know, medium to large cloves of garlic that have been cut into slivers and then tossed in olive oil. And they're gonna be roasted in the oven in some uh, loosely wrapped aluminum foil. So I just went ahead and put them on the foil. Of course, then we'll need also some olive oil uh, so that we can toss the, uh, the slivers of garlic in it. We're gonna need to have uh, a baguette uh, cut into uh, 16 slices, about 3 eighths of an inch thick. Cut them on the diagonal, they look better that way. And uh, I'm gonna cut them later, uh, closer to when I'm cooking, so that the uh, individual slices don't get um, uh, too dried out, okay? And uh, depending on how many you're making, you may need a full baguette. I have a half a baguette there. I'm making only for four people today, but I'm giving you the ingredients that you need to make for the full description, which is eight people. Uh, we'll also need to have uh, some Dijon mustard, and then we'll need to have um, two yellow onions that have been thinly sliced into about quarter, eight, quarter inch to uh, eighth, eighth inch to quarter inch slice, okay? Then we'll need to have about a half a cup of uh, chicken stock. Remember, we make our own stock in this course. Uh, there are bonus lessons on that and uh, details on my stock chart on my website, which I've mentioned a zillion times before in many lessons. We need to have about one tablespoon of sherry vinegar. Uh, we'll need to have uh, several uh, sprigs of fresh thyme, okay? And uh, then we'll also need to have uh, two anchovy fillets that have been chopped up. And we'll need to have uh, two Granny Smith apples that have been cut into a, uh, a quarter inch dice, very small as you can see. Okay, two Granny Smith apples. And uh, now they're, you know, after they've been chopped, they're gonna start to turn color. Uh, Granny Smiths won't turn as quickly and as much as other types of apples. That's why I'm using the Granny Smiths. But these are gonna be cooked anyway, so we don't really have to worry about the color turning too much. We'll also need to have um, two uh, plums, I'm sorry, four plums. Two Granny Smith apples that have been peeled and diced and four plums that have been peeled and diced. Same size dice, about a quarter of an inch, okay? Then uh, we will need to have um, three or four slices of bacon that have been cooked but not crispy. So cooked through but not crispy, then blotted dry, then cut into one inch pieces, okay? All right, then uh, we'll need to have um, three or four, I'm sorry, five or six plum tomatoes or Roma tomatoes cut off the ends, and then cut a total of 18 slices like this that are about, oh, quarter of an inch thick, okay? And then they've been tossed in olive oil and uh, uh, dusted with um, salt and pepper, okay? Then we'll need to have about one tablespoon of freshly chopped chives. I have a whole lot more than that here. We'll just use what we need. And a uh, pepper mill with so we can do freshly ground black pepper and uh, also some kosher salt. Okay, that is all of the ingredients. We'll break, I'll come back, and I'll show you the equipment for lesson 85. Oh, I left out one ingredient. We'll also need to have one uh, small to medium yellow onion that has been uh, cut into a uh, 
eighth inch to quarter inch dice. Okay, that's all the ingredients. Now we'll come back and go over the equipment. Okay, the equipment for lesson 85. You're gonna need a cutting board and your trusty chef's knife. You also need to have a uh, bread knife or serrated knife to uh, slice the baguette. You need to have a peeler to peel the apple and the plum. Uh, you need to have some foil to roast the garlic. Now I showed you this earlier, the garlic's already in there. I made a little packet out of it and uh, it'd be helpful to have a sizzle plate for it to sit on so you can take it in and out of the oven easily. You need to have a saute pan to melt the onions and to um, cook the uh, apples and plums and onions and a uh, wooden spoon to go with that. Uh, two small mixing bowls, one to hold the onions after they've been melted and right now I have the uncooked onions in the bowl so I'm just going to use the same bowl and a, um, a bowl to hold the fruit and onions, uh, the chopped onions after they've been cooked and right now I have the plums in one of those bowls I'm just going to use that bowl again. You'll need to have some brown paper so that after you cook the bacon you can drain it on the brown paper. And we'll need to have a sheet pan and brush. We're gonna brush the sheet pan with some olive oil. And this is where we're gonna roast our tomato slices. Now you could foil the sheet pan if you want to instead of brushing with olive oil, but you know I don't use much foil. I don't like to waste it. Uh, you'll need to have a metal spatula to get the tomatoes off of the roasting pan. A uh, spreader or a knife to spread the Dijon mustard onto the bread slices. And then you'll need to have your oven uh, at uh, 350 degrees. Okay, that is all the equipment. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. Okay, the first thing on our prep list is the roast to roast the garlic in the foil. Now, I showed you earlier that I had taken, I had put the garlic that was cut into slivers, I had been tossed in olive oil, I put that on the foil, and I folded it up into this little package, loosely, loosely um, encasing the... Uh, the garlic. Now I'm going to put it on the sizzle plate, put it in the oven 350 degrees and let it roast until those slivers are tender. It's going to take 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, okay next we're going to sweat the onions. Put in, uh, oh, you know, one to two tablespoons of uh, olive oil. Turn our heat on to medium, a little bit below medium. And then we're going to add the onions. And we're going to add a little salt and a little pepper and then we're going to stir them up a bit, get, the, get them coated and then I'm going to add the thyme sprigs, okay? And uh, I tied them with a piece of string to make it easier to get them out. You don't have to do that, but it does make it a little easier. And we're gonna let those sweat, and after they sweat, we're going to turn the heat down a little bit lower and let them cook low and slow and melt. Now while the uh, onions are melting, uh, or actually they're sweating right now, we're gonna start the um, apples and the plums and the other onions. and. Uh, you know, you could wait until this is done, until the uh, onions are done, and then do them in the same pan. Um, I'm going to do the um, apples and the, and the plums simultaneously. So I'm going to use the pan that I used to cook the bacon earlier. And I wiped out most of the bacon grease, but I left kind of a film of the bacon grease in there. Why did I do that? In superiore, building flavor, okay? So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil, probably about, oh, that's about half of a tablespoon and we are going to put that on medium heat and then we're going to add the uh, the plums and the apples and the chopped onions Some salt, some pepper, a 
We mix those up. And we're going to let these sweat. Stirring occasionally. Don't want them to burn. Don't want them to brown. Meanwhile, back at the uh, sliced onions, we're going to stir those around a little bit. And we're going to reduce the heat a bit. They're sweating pretty well, sweating out, and what's sweating I mean again? It, it means it's sweating out their water, sweating out their moisture. When the uh, steam starts coming off, stops coming off of them, they have uh, sweated most of the moisture out and they could start to brown or burn. But we're going to reduce the heat to low, keep an eye on them, we may reduce the heat even more, and we're going to stir them frequently, make sure they don't brown, make sure they don't burn. We just want them to get softer and softer. Now while the onions melt and the apples and the plums uh, cook, I'm going to roast the tomatoes. And to do that, I'm brushing the sheet pan with olive oil. Now we're going to lay out the, uh, the tomatoes. Remember, the tomatoes were tossed in olive oil, and um, they were seasoned with salt and pepper. And we're going to put these into the oven and let them roast until they start to get some brown on them. All right, now our onions have been going for probably about 10 minutes and uh, they're melting nicely. Uh, they're getting kind of a yellow, olive oil-ish color to them. Um, lighter, lighter yellow than olive oil, actually. And our, um, our fruit and onions, that's looking good. Coming together kind of look, looking like a salsa, right? All right, we're gonna keep cooking those probably 5, 10, 15 more minutes. Just depends on how they look. And they're on low heat. Okay, so you can see that our onions have melted very nicely. Uh, they are, um, they've, they've reduced in volume quite a bit because all the moisture, pretty much uh, all the moisture is gone, okay? Okay, here is our, um, our garlic. Uh, some of it is browned, uh, some of it has not. It's been in there about 30 minutes, and it looks just about right. Some of the pieces are a little crispy, some of them are soft. That's exactly what we're going for. Now we're gonna take these out, let these cool. Next, we're going to deglaze the onions with the chicken stock and about a tablespoon of um, sherry vinegar. I'm gonna put that on. Um, medium heat because we want the uh, chicken stock to um, to reduce now while our um, uh, stock is reducing in the onions uh, we're going to check on our tomatoes they look good. They've got some uh, some brown on them here. Okay, we're going to take these uh, off of this pan so they stop cooking. I'm just going to put them on a sizzle plate, and we're going to let them cool also. You could leave them on the pan and, and cool them at room temperature. Just keep them away from the heat. Now our onions are looking good. The stock and the uh, sherry vinegar is reducing nicely. We're gonna let them go just a little bit longer till they get to be a little bit more golden. Okay, now our onions are looking almost dry, okay? We're gonna add the anchovies, chopped anchovies, and stir that up. 
And then we're gonna let this cook just a little bit more until these onions are just wet. Okay, our onions look finished, they're beautiful. We're gonna take out the thyme, turn off our heat, and then we're going to put these onions into a bowl and then let them come to just cool to room temperature, okay? And um, our, our fruit has also reduced quite a bit because most of the moisture is gone and the, um, the apples, the plums, and the onions have formed kind of like a salsa and they've taken on a very nice color and um, we're also going to take that off the heat and we're going to let that cool to room temperature. All right, now we're about to start the plating process. First thing we're going to do is um, we're going to spread a little bit of Dijon mustard on each one of our slices of bread. Okay, now next we're going to put some of the apple plum mixture on each one. And uh, remember, I'm making a smaller number tonight, but I gave you the um, quantities so that you can make for uh, enough for eight people, which is 16 slices, which is two uh, per person, okay? I'm making fewer tonight. Next is the uh, bacon. I'm going to put two slices, I mean, two pieces on each one. Next, we're going to put some of the onion confit on top of each one. Next we put a uh, tomato piece, tomato slice, on top of each one. Then we put some of the garlic slivers on top of each one. Okay, now we're going to uh, plate up, and remember we're going to do two per guest. And I put them on the plate before I do the final garnish of the chives because I want the chives to show up on the white plate as well as on the uh, pinchos themselves, okay? So that's it, that's lesson 85. Roasted tomato pinchos with onion confit, apples, plum, bacon, and roasted garlic. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Next up is ricotta mascarpone gnocchi with lobster and morels. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.